Hey, mushroom nerds. I'm spending a little bit of time with some gorgeous mushrooms in the Amanita genus in the uh, Caesar section of the Amanita genus. So if you're not familiar with mushrooms and uh, sort of how they are classified, Amanita is a very large genus of mushrooms that are cap and stem mushrooms. And some of them are very poisonous. Some of them, like these Caesar mushrooms, are edible and good. Uh, but suffice it to say, if you are interested in mushroom foraging, you should learn to recognize Amanitas in general. But today, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of species in a um, section of the genus, or just basically a collection of different species called the Caesar mushrooms, or section Caesariae. Uh, they are in some books listed to be edible, in other books, especially a recent field guide for Georgia that I picked up by the Bessettes, uh, Arlene and Alan Bessette. They state that uh, some of these Caesars are edibility unknown. And the reason for that is we have a lot of ambiguity of who is who uh, within well, gosh, the Amanita genus, all mushrooms, we're determining a lot of new species, but uh, Amanitas in particular get a lot of study, and there's a lot going on here. So, uh, you know, I want to do my best guess uh, on some of the features of this particular mushroom, but I am very familiar with the most distinctive of these uh, Caesar mushrooms. And I'm gonna point down to uh, our specimen here again. So this is Amanita jacksonii. And uh, it is a popular edible mushroom. It's very common in the summertime in the south, but also I see it further north, you know, in places like New Jersey. Oftentimes, the further north you go, it seems like the bigger they get. Uh, but the common name for this is the slender Caesar mushroom. I think I can, uh, you know, don't have to spend much time on why that's the case. But uh, these mushrooms are the most pleasant to eat when they are uh, fairly immature. So with these Caesar mushrooms, sort of the, your distinctive features with them is first of all, and most importantly, I think, this big cup of tissue at the base. And it's leathery. It often has this sort of vertical split. It is very attractive and very common in uh, mushrooms that are in the Caesar group. Uh, or the Caesar section. Uh, anyway, with Amanita jacksonii in particular, it is a really robust and large egg at the base of the stem. All right, so ascending uh, further onto the fruiting body, let me get, let me not sit on my specimens, but also move a little closer to you so that it's easier to focus. All right. We'll see if I have the wherewithal to edit that out. Probably not. Okay, so let's return to our Amanita jacksonii. We've talked about this cup of tissue at the base. That is the remains of what is called a universal veil. As you go up the stem, you have a nice yellow stem. It is uh, a little fragile and sort of hollowy and cottony on the inside often. We'll open one up and take a look in a second. Then, uh, and very distinctively for Amanita jacksonii, you have these uh, sort of chevron streaks or uh, sort of an overlay of orangish tissue on this yellow stem. This one has taken a little bit of damage. And so what I'm going to do is harvest our little fella here. And um, here, let me show you, actually, this is a more mature specimen. Uh, and as far as edibility is concerned, usually I try to find and collect these mushrooms when they are in an immature state. That said, when they're fully mature, they're just so glorious and beautiful for photography. Okay, so let's get a good view of those chevron-shaped or stretch marks, basically. And this is a little bit of orange ornamentation on uh, this yellowy stem. 
Going even further up, we have sort of an orangey ring on the stem too. It's a little membranous, a little bit skirt-like, and it is delicate. So, you know, don't mess around with it too much. You got some more of this beautiful streaking. And then finally, the gills are sort of a like light yellowy color. And sometimes uh, with Amanita jacksonii and other relatives, that color is a lot more pronounced and dramatically yellow. Uh, but they're tightly packed. And you can see also like with the immature ones, a little bit of material right around the edge where that um, partial veil that, you know, turns into a ring on the stem uh, is setting up to burst open. So I just love that like little itty bitty fringes on things are one of my favorites. All right, so I'm going to harvest our youngin here. And then I'm gonna talk to you about a beautiful uh, other species. Oh, before I do any of that, I want to show you one of the most important features, or not important, well, it is important, but uh, with your Caesar mushrooms, you have a lot of species, most of them, in fact, I think, uh, have this feature called striation. And so these are stripy grooves on the margin of the cap. Some of the Caesars, it goes almost all the way to the center of the mushroom. Sometimes these uh, striations will cause a lot of like lateral cracks as well. And this largely or often applies to the sort of larger Caesar species. But uh, I just love the contrast here. And then addition, in addition, you usually have some sort of umbo is what this called, you know, as a little nipple. And then finally on the cap, you have this sort of variegated color that starts typically darker in the middle, like a dark red and then kind of orangey to a yellow as uh, you reach the edge. And again, I'm talking about a mature specimen, but you know, even when mature, you can see this nice robust uh, egg at the base of the stem. All right, so let's harvest our little guy. As I said, uh, you know, I prefer to eat these mushrooms and most people who do eat them prefer to have them either in their egg stage or when they are quite young. So before they open up and you have a lot of gill material. So this is kind of um, about as late as I want to wait in this mushroom maturing to bring it home with me. As far as how to consume these, a lot of people will just sort of, well, and this is what I'm gonna do with this one, is just slice up a little bit of it. And it's one of the few wild mushrooms that you can actually consume raw. And so you can put a little olive oil and a little salt on it and just, a, it's a little snack. I don't recommend eating a tremendous amount of it. And again, if you are new to mushroom foraging, the Amanita genus is, um, even though this mushroom is pretty beginner friendly, uh, there are Amanitas that are quite dangerous, so you want to be cautious and well-informed, but there are some really great resources out there and good field guides that'll make you nice and confident after a few tries at identifying this little sucker. Okay, so I have done my um, archaeologist thing or whatnot. I always wanted to be a paleontologist when I was a kid, and then I discovered mushrooms, and I'm like, oh, I get to brush things. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so... This is when the mushroom is kind of in its youngest form here. And the striations, you can start to see them, but they're not nearly as pronounced yet. That little fringe that I'm obsessed with, and then that variegated color. Also, often when they're young, they have this really nice sort of shiny appearance, but they're not, uh, you know, slimy. A little bit greasy almost is the best way to describe it. So... I'm going to pop off this leathery uh, cup because as you can see, you get a lot of furch and you know mess attached to the bottom of it. And it's also not something you wanna eat because it's just kind of rough, tough, and not worthwhile. All right, so looking at this, you don't have a lot of highly pronounced uh, sort of chevrons yet or that orangey material, but you can see some of that ornamentation coming in. I do want to qualify, there are other Amanita mushrooms in the Caesar section uh, that have ornamentation on the stem. That said, as far as anybody that I know or any of the books that I've consulted, uh, you know, there aren't any that are known to be poisonous. So again, some authors list them as edibility unknown, 
and some of them are just sort of generically Caesar mushrooms are uh, considered edible and good. And historically, they have a really long history of being quite popular all the way back to ancient times. The reason it is called the Caesar mushroom, oh, let me actually point a Caesar mushroom at you when I'm saying this. So the reason that it's called uh, a Caesar mushroom is it is related to, and the uh, sort of um, iconic type for this type of mushroom is called Amanita caesariae, and it is a European species that has been uh, really popular, consumed by uh, Roman emperors even to the very beginning of the sort of imperial period. Uh, the father of Nero, Emperor Claudius, ostensibly was poisoned by his uh, wife Agrippina. So Agrippina was um, a very power hungry uh, Roman aristocrat and her son Nero, who was younger than Claudius's sort of older and anointed um, successor. Uh, basically Agrippina poisoned him with one of these Caesar mushrooms or, you know, served him mushrooms that she said, these are the Caesar mushrooms. And, uh, as a matter of fact, they were death caps or something similar. I'm not going to stand by the, uh, historical veracity of that. However, all that by way of saying these mushrooms are highly prized in Europe and, uh, you can find them in markets. They're less popular in the United States and there's a lot of reasons for that, but mostly it's because we're afraid of mushrooms and we probably shouldn't be. Okay, so I want to talk about this beautiful member of the Caesar uh, section called Amanita beningiana, and it is named for a woman mycologist, uh, an amateur uh, named Mary Banning. And uh, as you can see, it shares a lot of features with this Amanita jacksonii. So you can see that you have the striations. They're a lot more faint on this younger specimen. You have a delicate and sort of like, it's almost um like a little band of tissue that is really rounded. Here, let me just open it up. <laughs> you as opposed to trying to you know, trying to use my words okay so it's almost like you have uh you know a little bit of ring on the stem and then almost a, a little a more accentuated band uh that is i don't know a little more plain anyway i digress slightly and that that's a feature that you'll see on all of these caesars like their <clears throat> rings are uh, you know, either ephemeral, like in the case of this particular one, this is a mature uh, member of the uh, species Amanita beningiana. And their other uh, feature here that you can see is you have a little egg at the base, similar to your Amanita jacksonii, except it is far more uh, small, and that makes it a little harder to collect. And so if you are interested in identifying especially yellow Amanita mushrooms, it is very important to uh, you know, dig around at the base and really it is quite difficult to collect this um, if it's, you know, stuck in wet material and leaves, which it often is. As you can see also, you have light yellow gills. I accentuate that on both of these specimens because most Amanita mushrooms have white gills as opposed to uh, a yellow, like a pale yellow to dark yellow, which is what is typical with most of your Caesar mushrooms. All right, so I've covered most of it i wanted to <laughs> i wanted to show you also a really beautiful blusher mushroom uh so this is an edible critter that uh, has a beautiful mahogany staining it's kind of pale but it has these beautiful sort of floofy warts and a, again a really distinctive sort of uh, mahogany stain blushers are edible they are uh, and the reason i wanted to bring them into this conversation at the last moment is that they are another section of the amanita genus section valley day and uh, i believe all of them blush or stain and have this sort of you know bulbous base and they are all very popular edibles and all of this is by way of saying that you know the amanita genus is elaborate there is a lot of emerging research and species being classified that we don't know all that much about 
However, there are some really wonderful markers for these large groups of species that are known to be safe, that are much beloved, you know, especially in Europe. Uh, many thousands of years of being less afraid of mushrooms seems to have done them some good. But uh, this blusher is just a really good example of a critter that it's in the Amanita genus and not worth being frightened of at all. So in summation, I am really pleased that it has rained. I am going to take this home and have a little nibble. I encourage you to do the same, but if you are going to do that, of course, make sure you try a small amount if you're doing it for the first time, just in case your belly isn't all that into it. That said, these are really, uh, again, delightful, very popular mushrooms, so if you need help getting an identification uh, or you need help verifying your own identification, there are plenty of people who'd be happy to help you on the internet. So in the meantime, I hope you find a billion mushrooms. Let's talk again soon.